In this video, I want to talk about angle. But in order to do that, we first need to come over here and adjust the angle and the angle jitter. But when we have a round shape like this, the angle isn't going to mean much. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change the shape to the shape flat. And now we have something that we can clearly see is going straight up and down. Now, if I were to come over here, hold down shift and make a mark like so, you can see these guys are going straight up and down. Now, what I want to do is I want to change the grain so that we have something besides just pure white here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And I'm going to go ahead and choose this guy right here, the sponge two. So now we have something where we can clearly see that this grain is also going to be straight up and down if we make a mark like so. So you can see we're always getting the same patch of grain. It's always in the same place. It's always straight up and down, just like these guys are. Now, if I come over here and I change the angle on this guy to something like nine, you're gonna see that all of my dabs are gonna be going at a slant here. And if I hold down shift and I make a straight mark, you can see they're all going in a slant here. And you can also see that our grain has not changed its rotation. The grain is still going straight up and down. You can see that it's basically just taking the same grain and filling the shape with it, but it's not rotating the shape of that grain with the rotation of the dab. If we wanted that to happen, what we could do is we can come over here and choose to follow shape rotation. What will happen is then the shape and the grain will be treated as a unit. When I rotate the angle of the shape, it will also rotate the angle of the grain. And if I come over here and hold down shift and I make a straight line stroke, you can see that now the grain is going to be rotated to maintain the same angle as what we see here when we're rotating the shape. So if I rotate the shape even more, and if I come over here and I hold down shift and I make a straight line stroke, you can see that we're going to be able to rotate those guys as a unit. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and clear this off and I wanna go ahead and talk about what the angle jitter does because the angle jitter is going to take the angle, whatever the current angle value is, currently we have a value of 15 and it's going to jitter it. So if I just go ahead and make a straight line stroke with this guy, for reference, you can see they're all gonna be at an angle of 15, but if I come over here and I increase the angle jitter to 15, what's gonna happen is it's going to rotate this in both directions from this starting angle. So if I go ahead and hold down shift and make a mark, you can see these guys are gonna be rotating in both directions, positive and negative, based on this as the starting angle. So the idea here is you set the starting angle and then you set the angle jitter to rotate around that starting angle. And again, I'll hold down shift, make a straight stroke, and you can see that we are rotating in both directions, positive and negative, around that starting angle. And this is something that we can get quite a lot of variability based on this angle jitter. And you can see that this combination of settings could be really useful for creating stamping dabs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this angle back to zero. I'm gonna set the angle jitter all the way to 100. And I wanna go ahead now and just go ahead and spray some of these guys down. And you can see this could actually be really useful as a starting point for a stamping technique. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that off. And what I wanna do now is I wanna come over here and change the shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the shape to something that has a rougher edge, the shape sponge two. I'm gonna choose that. And you're gonna see now we're gonna get something that's really quite useful for a sponging technique. Now, again, we want to take into consideration that currently we're allowing the shape and the grain to rotate as a unit because we have this guy enabled. If we wanted to increase some sort of size jitter on this, and I'll go ahead and hold down shift and make a mark, what you can see is that when we change the size here via the jitter, you can see that the grain is not going to change its size along with it. It's going to maintain the same grain size each time. That may not be what we want. So we can also choose to follow the shape size. Now what's gonna happen is the starting size of this is gonna change because it's gonna match these two images together. And if you remember right now, the grain is gonna be twice the scale if we do not have this enabled. But as soon as we enable this, it automatically scales it to match the shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold down shift and make a mark and you're gonna see that we're gonna start at that point, but then as we scale down to smaller sizes, the grain is gonna scale with that. And if we increase the size shader, this will be even more obvious. So again, I'll go ahead and make a straight line stroke. And you can see, you can't even hardly see the grain because it scales down so small, thanks to the fact that it's going to be following the shape size. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this off. I'm gonna go ahead and back the size jitter off just a little bit. And now I'm gonna come over here and increase the opacity jitter up pretty high. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the scattering up pretty high and the spacing jitter up pretty high. And I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the spacing so that we're gonna get something that's gonna give us a fairly dense stroke, something like that right there. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and scrub. And what you can see is now we have a really interesting stamping brush that has a rough edge, it has some opacity variation, it's going to be changing the angle of that grain as well as the size of it as it's randomizing. And we can just tweak this until we get exactly the results that we're looking for. And you can see here that this is looking really nice. I might just go ahead and drop the opacity a little bit on this so that it doesn't build up quite so quick. But you can see that's a really interesting type of stamping brush. Now we could also do a variation on this by simply coming over here and choosing the splats three right here in order to change the filling of that particular shape. And if I do that, you're going to see that now we're gonna get something that looks like a splatter brush. And all I would need to do is simply reduce the scattering here to make this denser and make it not spray over such a broad area like so. And I could even come in here and do something like opacity variations so that it will only get opaque in the areas that we press harder and it will be more transparent in the areas that we don't press as hard. So you can see the stamping technique can yield a lot of interesting variations and you want to take the angle jitter into account as well as the follow shape size and follow shape rotation if you're going to be using angle jitter or you're going to be using another means of controlling the angle, including the angle slider here, and also changing the size via the size jitter or the size via pressure. So you have a lot of possibilities here as far as creating stamping type technique brushes and these guys are really gonna open up the possibilities for truly random effects here in Rebel. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clear off this layer. I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and reset the brush back to the basic status, and we're gonna go ahead and pick up from here in the next video.